Okay guys, for our project this week, we're going to be doing a vector portrait illustration. And to do it in Illustrator, we're going to be using the pencil tool. The pencil tool will allow you to take full advantage of your digital drawing tablet, and you can freeform draw different shapes. Additionally, we're going to be playing around with some of the layers, and I'm going to allow you to work from a photograph. This doesn't have to be a photograph that you take. However, I do want it to be a really good contrasting photo. The photo that I'm working with, I'll turn off these layers, looks like this, and it's one that I found from just a regular stock photo. The main thing that I'm looking for is a good face, needs to be at least from the bust up, that has good shadows to it and good highlights. You wouldn't just want to have a regular picture taken with um, outdoors with your, with your regular camera. It may make your face too flat, too washed out. What I'm really looking for is some great details. Details in the hair, details along the skin, details along any clothing that they may be wearing as well. If your face has an expression, all the better. It'll make your illustration pop out a lot more. Give it a good dynamic kind of feel. So feel free to look around on the internet and find a good photograph that you can work from. Additionally, make sure it's a color photograph. If you're working from black and white, you're not going to take best advantage of all the color things that we're going to be doing when we start changing up our blending modes. Okay, so let's jump in and get started. Before we get started, let's take a little minute to talk about the tool we'll be working with. The pencil tool, if you haven't found it, is in the upper middle of your toolbox. If you don't see it, it looks like a pencil and it could be hiding underneath your smooth or your eraser tool. With this tool, it takes full advantage of your drawing pad because you can then click and drag like you would a regular pencil or any type of brush. And as you drag it around, it will trace wherever your mouse is moving. So when I let go, I'm left with the line. If, since it is a vector, if I do need to change it up, I can always select the points, select the line, and move it around. Additionally, you can further customize the options for your pencil tool. If I double click, on the pencil, this will bring up our options. Now the fidelity and the smoothness have to deal with how smooth and uh, true your line is to the, the drawing that you create. In general, the lower these numbers, the more detailed line you can draw. The higher the numbers, the smoother the line you're going to be creating. So really if you're trying to create kind of a cartoonish type look, you, you may actually want to make your fidelity and smoothness very high. But if you're trying to do a very detailed, almost true-to-life rendering, you would want to keep these very low. For this project, I'm going to keep these relatively low. This looks pretty good. At the bottom, there are some other options that you can do with your tool, uh, pencil tool. First of all, if I needed to fill in my pencil stroke, notice that when I created these, I had my stroke color selected and I had no fill color. This, will, this means it, whenever I make an object, it won't fill it in if it's not checked off. If I do check it off, now if I have a fill color, let's turn it uh, purple, click and drag, it will fill it in with whatever my fill color is. This is what we do want to have turned on for our project this time. The final two sets, keep selected and edit within certain paths, will allow you to make corrections to the line that you created. I'm going to erase this away. Notice that right now I don't have them turned on. They're not selected and I'm not going to be able to edit with it. If I was to make a line, it's not selected. And if I wanted to, say, continue on with the line, well, if I start dragging and drawing again, it's just going to make another line. And there will be a little bit of a gap in between the two. However, if I turn on both of these, I do need to keep it selected. I can tell Illustrator to edit the selected path as long as I come within three or however many pixels that I want. So this time with both of those selected, when I click and drag, make a line, it's still selected. So now when I get closer, notice the little X next to my cursor will disappear. And when I click and drag now, it'll add on to the selection that I've made. Now if I get too far away, it will start making a new line by itself. So that's one thing to consider. For this project, here's how I want you to set up your pencil tool options. We're going to keep the fidelity and smoothness very low. We're going to get a good detailed line. We do want it to be filled in, 
but we don't want to make any edits or changes to the uh, objects that we draw off. We want to be able to work relatively quickly. So we're going to check the top one and uncheck those bottom two. From here, now I can choose a fill color, I'm not going to worry about a stroke color, and we can start to drag around and make selections from here. The second tool that we're going to use is our eyedropper tool. I'll open up our photograph. The eyedropper will allow us to easily and quickly select color areas that we can work from. Since we want our illustration to match or to closely resemble our photograph, we want to also select those colors. The eyedropper tool, if you don't see it, is down here towards the middle bottom of your toolbox. It's also hiding underneath your measure tool. If I was to click with my eyedropper tool, notice that it picks up and creates a fill color of that particular color. And I can always click and drag around to see exactly what it's doing. If I wanted to, <clears throat> even if I have my stroke on front, whatever I pick up, that's what it will create for the fill color. So what we'll be doing is we'll be selecting different color areas and then we'll be drawing off the different shapes from there. The final thing you need to know is the keyboard shortcut for both of these. The keyboard shortcut for the eyedropper tool is the I, easy to remember. The keyboard shortcut for the pencil tool is N. Think of it as pencil. So if I hit I and N on my keyboard, I can quickly and easily swap between the two. Just pay close attention to which tool you have when you're using it, because they tend to look very much the same. That's it for setting up our tools. Now let's jump in and actually start creating the project.